Good morning. Start off with our next chapter. Possibly final one, as far as I understand. Ber Higurashi no Nakoni. Let's see. Kashimashi chapter. The tragedy spreads to Okonomiya, with no end in sight. Who is behind all this, and for what purpose? Can't be stopped? The tale of Higurashi outbreak concludes here? The club member's final battle. A little bit. Jeez, I'm cold. It's that wind. <laughs> this is a work of fiction, surprisingly. Can't believe it. So we're just continuing off where we left off previously? In the distant town of Okonomiya, we saw smoke rising from fires here and there. We had a very clear view of it as it hung ominously over the whole town. Occasionally, the wind carried the sound of screams raging and unidentifiable, these portentous noises echoing in the quiet town. It sounds like something's dying, and cry. This isn't just in Hinomizawa, huh? Does this mean... The virus has finally spread to Okonomiya? Rika... Rika had stayed behind in Himimizawa of her own volition. We tried to stop her since it was dangerous, but seeing the sight, maybe it really was better to stay in Himimizawa where we knew our way around. Mion was still injured, but for the time being, she seemed stable. Still, she'd only been given first aid. She still needed to see a doctor. The rioters had broken into the Erie clinic, so it was abandoned, and Erie was nowhere to be found. Anyway, we need to find you a doctor. I'm doing fine. Sure, it hurts, but it settled down a lot. No. If you don't get proper treatment, then it could fester later. We'll just have to search for a doctor. It's hard to imagine any doctors are open for business with things like this. <laughs> Let's head for the office of the Sonozaki group. My mother and the others are there. Should be able to do something. You think Shichan's there too? Given what's happened, that's the safest place to be. I just hope those people are still reasonable. Anyway, let's check out the town. We can't stay up here forever. Right. Is this disaster only happening here? Or has it expanded out to the rest of Japan? We don't know anything here in Hinomizawa. The idea that this could be happening all over the world. I don't want to think about it. Let's go. I'm alright. I can walk by myself. Normally, we'd go to Okonomiya by bicycle. But it was easy to imagine that rioters would be acting like the neighborhood watch here in Okonomiya, just like they were in Hinomizawa. The whole virus commotion originated in Hinomizawa. So the people in Okonomiya should, naturally, view everyone coming from Hinomizawa as an enemy. We decided it was too dangerous to move on roads, likely with the watch on them, so we headed there on foot, using back paths instead. The kind of rat used by gatherers. The elderly and the children that ran around in the fields of Hinomizawa were the safest ones, while Keiichi and the others headed to Okonomiya. Keiichi's parents had evacuated themselves to the Sonozaki's secret underground tunnels. <laughs> there were already some resources stored down there, so they'd be safe for a while. Still, they needed to reach a place that was even safer, one with plenty of food and medical treatment. Confirming whether or not such a safe place even existed was their biggest objective behind scouting out Okonomiya. <clears throat> Is it back to Rika? It looks like it's... Yep. There's mounds of corpses. It's an awful sight. The miserable remains of those beaten to death by the rioters lay here and there on the shoulders of the streets. 
Even Hanyu shook her head at the swarm of flies and the pervasive stench of death. But it's grown quieter. <laughs> Look at that smug face. Yes, it has. This is about the time when nearly all those who let the demons of paranoia into their hearts die off after trying to kill each other. That roaring wind that was like the ominous groan of a dragon could no longer be heard. To test this real quick. Hopefully someone doesn't join in anytime soon. <laughs> All that enveloped Hinomizo in its place was the silence of death. The screams of those who allowed the demons into their hearts and began killing each other could no longer be heard either. But it doesn't hurt to be cautious. True. I can't die before I see how this crazy world ends. Where are you going? The Uri Clinic's basement. That should be the safest place in Hinamizawa right now, don't you think? Hmm. The underground research ward was filled with the silence of death as well. So as long as she didn't mind the corpses and the trails of bright red blood spatter staining the pale white walls, it was the perfect place to hide out for a while. Bit weird, but okay. Are there still violent ones in the village? Yes. I think it should quiet down soon, but for now? Then it's settled. Let's wait for the heat to die down. We should be able to find someone's drinks and snacks down there. Plus, the bathrooms are nice. <laughs> Rika and Hanyu made their way to the Iria Clinic. After all that time they spent researching the disease, it turned out they were just a den of incompetence, unable to do anything at all. Put one in my pocket, and one on the keyboard. They passed through animal trails in the mountains, and through footpaths between the fields. And sometimes they held their breath and tried to sense the presence of nearby people, while other times they ran like rabbits. Then, once they jumped right over the guardrails, they were in Okonomi. Every now and then the wind would carry a roar from the distance, along with smoke and the smell of something burning. The town was deathly quiet, but it wasn't dead. The rioters who allowed paranoia into their hearts were only lying in wait as they teemed with rage. It might be more dangerous here than in Hinamizawa. Agreed. I've got nothing but bad feelings about this. Are there riots here because of fear about the virus as well? This is just my theory, but I think this might be a symptom of the virus, actually. Maybe so. What do you mean? So it's like a human version of rabies. I thought everyone was going crazy out of fear of this killer virus. But that's not enough to explain everything. An illness that stokes unfounded fears and suspicions until the victim is driven by nothing else. Does a disease like that really exist? I mean, they never mentioned any of that on TV. TV doesn't always tell the truth. Besides, there's a possibility the killer virus part was just a wrong guess. They're both equally frightening. That's for sure. But why are we fine then? Maybe we're resistant? Well, even if we're not showing any symptoms, we can't rule out the possibility that we're still carrying the disease. Is it really okay? For us to go into the city like this? It shouldn't be a problem. Not judging by the state of affairs. <laughs> we advanced carefully, checking to make sure the roads were clear. Abandoned cars formed the lines on the city streets. Some cars had crashed into each other and were still smoking at various intersections. Even on the sidewalks. We saw the scattered remains of people murdered under suspicion of being infected. I just hope Shion and Mion's parents are still sane. Mom and Dad are keeping everyone in line, I'm sure. Shion-san does have a quick temper. There's a huge gap between how Shichan acts when she's calm and when she isn't. I'm a little worried about her. 
She'll be fine. She won't talk back to Mom at times like this. I'm sure Mom will be keeping everyone organized. Surely. If your Oreo had been healthy, even the Hinomizawa Town Council wouldn't have lost its cool. Mion had already gotten a taste of how strong leadership could prevent chaos ahead of time. This virus probably drives people to attack others out of fear and anxiety. So with strong leadership, teamwork, and trust, they should be able to maintain their senses. You think the virus commotion fo fostered fear? And their terror ran rampant? That idea feels right to me. At the very least, even Hinomizawa didn't start acting weird up until the JSDF left and stopped doing their jobs. That is true. Once the JSDF left, everyone grew frightened all at once, and the world went mad. Satsuko raised her voice to note that sudden memory. That reminds me, Rika said something too. She said that people with strong hearts will be fine, since you won't hand them over to the demons. Rika-chan said that? Yes. I just assumed she meant something along the lines of illness starts in the mind, but... Maybe there's a chance. She meant exactly what she said. There was that moment when the blood rushed to our heads when Ren and I went to rescue Satko. Maybe that was really risky for the two of us. Maybe so. But we managed to stay calm even as that fire burned strong in our hearts. Let your heart run hot and keep your thoughts cool. Maybe the reason we didn't end up like the others is because we've been training ourselves for these kinds of situations in Mion's club. If you lose your cool and hand your heart over the primal emotions, then you go crazy. If you call the result of that process a demon, then it fits with the legends passed down from long ago about Onigafuchi Village. You mean that legend about demons coming up out of the swamp? I'm sure something similar to this happened long ago. And I'm positive the people thrown into paranoia and running around out of control were called demons. Makes sense. I think we're getting a grasp of what's going on. Still, if there were legends left about it, then that means the whole thing was settled and people survived. So this isn't hopeless. We have hope. <laughs> Right. This commotion isn't going to destroy the world. There's guaranteed to be a way to end it. Is waiting for Yashua someone to descend the only option we have? That's how it ended back then, according to the legends. The people were unable to do anything, except wait for Oyashara-sama's descent. Are you saying all we can do is wait? Even with all this going on? If we're to follow the legends. Yeah, come on already, Oyashara-sama. If you're out there watching this, then make with the descent and put a stop to this. <laughs> <laughs> Gods catch colds? Oh, well, humans aren't the only ones that can sneeze, you know. The area clinic had been ransacked by rioters. Believing the rumors that Kira was hidden here, they had swarmed it en masse. But that only applied to the sections on the surface. Their riot hadn't extended to the secret war research ward underground. There's nothing here, though. If Eerie were around, he would have taken action long ago. We mustn't avert our eyes. There were several corpses gathering flies there in the plundered clinic. Those who believed in the cure ultimately became convinced that someone there was hiding it and began to kill each other. <laughs> Hanyu covered her eyes after all, but Rika stepped over the corpses without any concern. Some of the corpses were even familiar faces to her, but Rika didn't seem to care. After all, she doesn't care about this world. She passed through the secret door and headed underground. 
it was far safer to stay behind the secret security door than on the surface. After all, all the researchers here were either murdered or committed suicide. There was nothing safer than a place completely devoid of others. The security system confirmed it was Rika Furude, and then the door opened. Even though her expression never changed at the sight of the corpses, she heaved a sigh of relief once she confirmed the door was shut behind her. Now we can do as we please. Be that sleep through this, or snack on the treat someone stored down here. There's no one else here, after all. Smug face, so weird. I'm surprised you're able to stay so calm amidst that dreadful sight. I don't know if that's you being strong or shameless. I've experienced death, even my own. More times than I can count. So why should some stranger's corpse face me at this point? <sighs> the old Rika was cuter. She was as scared as one should be for your age. What should I fear at this point? Well, I suppose you could summon up a ghost. I'd be a little surprised if you did that. <laughs> oh. Huh? Is that Satoshi? What is it, Rika? D don't start scaring me, okay? The underground ward was supposed to be empty. But she thought she heard something just then. Was it her imagination, or was Satoshi banging on glass? They both glanced at each other, held their breath, and strained their ears. You hear that, right? Is it a ghost? You're practically a ghost yourself, so why are you afraid? Still, what is the sound? Far off in the distance, there was a dun dun. They could hear that dull sort of sound repeating over and over. They both nodded to each other and strained their ears, trying to identify the source of the sound. Oh, back to Okonomiya. <laughs> kill them! Kill them! Kill the infected! Kill them and burn their corpses! A group of ten young rioters dashed down the main street. Their clothes were stained with a spray of blood, and their eyes were bloodshot. The bats and metal pipes in their hands were dripping with blood, and were bent in unsettling directions. If those people find us, then we're really in trouble. Were they college students? I guess this won't be as easy as facing Hinomizawa's elderly. We are fine, I think. They haven't found us. Phew. This is a real pickle. The insane youths were dashing whenever they heard some commotion. Then they killed those who fled. Those who begged for their lives, and occasionally those who stood against them. They truly were acting like bloodthirsty demons. That very sight was most likely what the legends of Onigafuchi Village were passing down. Is the office far from here? In terms of distance, no. But if we're trying to avoid the main street, then it's surprisingly hard to get to. The main street is full of crazies either running around everywhere or killing each other. Then let us practice safety first. Hmm? Quiet. We heard the rattling of an empty can rolling around somewhere behind us. Someone had kicked the empty trap can trap Satoko set up earlier. They weren't keeping quiet, either. We could hear the loud voices of the rioters drawing close. They had finally started searching the back alleys, too, in their search for more to kill. This is bad. They'll catch up to us. But we can't exactly run, either. They'll find us. We have to hide and wait them out. Bring those trash cans over here. Create cover. Hurry! Keychon, grab that one. Yeah. <laughs> it was an unfortunate mistake. Keiji's foot slipped on some of the garbage scattered around the trash can, and he went down, can and all. The loud clatter echoed throughout the back alley. Hey, I heard something. It must be another infected. 
Others responded to that call, their war cries full of madness and rage roaring in the distance. The cries came from both behind and in front of them. It's a pincer attack! We can't fight here. That'll only draw in even more of them. We'll have to break through the front. Let's push through to the office. Ah, ow, ow? Seriously? Keichikun? Did you sprain your leg? Everyone's blood froze in an instant. Because that meant they just they had just lost their one and only best option. Mion lent Keiichi her shoulder and quickly issued orders. Setsuko, find our way out. Rena, weapons. I'm already on it. This is all I could find. Rena held up a sign prohibiting bicycle parking. It would at least serve to frighten others if she swung it at them. But their greatest weapon of all was the look in Rena's eyes, filled with her resolve to protect her friends. Whenever Rena was prepared to defend something precious to her, she showed no mercy or hesitation. Satsuko used the talented observation skills she had when setting traps to rapidly cal calculate what to do. If both forward and backward were blocked off, then they could only escape upward. <laughs> if they used the trash cans as a stool and climbed up on those eaves, then... Ah, but they couldn't. KJ had sprained his leg. There wasn't anything they could do without a ladder. I'm fine. It's only temporary. This is nothing. It certainly wasn't so bad that he couldn't walk. It probably would heal quickly once he got some rest. But that didn't mean he could hope to escape their current dire straits. Why do you have to sprain your foot at a time like this? You really are a blockhead, Keiichi-san. Ah, if only we had a ladder. If you're just worried about me, I'll manage. So don't worry about me and climb up there. If you've got time to spout nonsense, then start praying that I find a ladder. Oh, God in heaven. Oh, Yashua-sama, please bless us with a ladder. <laughs> if praying will save us, then I'll stick my belly button out and dance. Michan, a ladder. What? There really was a ladder coming down from one of the eaves. Looking up, there was a lone young girl lowering a stainless steel ladder with shaky hands. They were usually pretty light, but it was plenty heavy for such a small girl. There was a pretty good chance she'd lose her balance and fall down. Thank you. It's good now, so let go. Rana took the ladder and quickly moved it into place. Keijon, can you climb? If I don't climb, then those other people are dying at Rena's hands. Thanks. We can avoid more needless deaths if you can climb. If you can. Rena had already broken off parts of the wooden sign's frame, turning it into a sharp, pointed spear. Her idea was on a whole different level from just waving it around to scare people. It was both frightening and reassuring. Still, nothing was better than taking the ladder. Thank you. I don't know who you are, but thank you very much. Oh, this is the girl on the cover. I suppose it is worth that. <laughs> I'm good. I can climb. I know, but hurry. They're almost here. There's more of those infected bastards. A whole bunch, actually. Kill them! Kill them! <laughs> if you're out to kill, then you're prepared to be ki killed too, right? Renaissance, please climb. Once Rana climbed up, Mion quickly pulled up the ladder. Isn't she injured by a gunshot? How is she doing these feats. The young girl gestured to say it was okay to leave the ladder here, before passing through the second floor window via the eaves. Below them, the young rioters were spouting filthy curses as they searched for a way to climb. This way. This place won't be safe forever, either. Seriously, thank you. You saved our lives. 
Are we going out through another window? There's no way those people won't climb up here. Those weird comma drops. She exited through another window, then used an outdoor air conditioning unit as a stepping stone to climb into the neighboring building through its own window. Apparently, she had been traveling along the second floor of the shopping district to avoid the dangerous streets below. They continued moving like that from building to building and roof to roof, until they were certain they had managed to escape to a safe area. They eventually stopped at the second floor of a shop slash residence. Apparently, that was her shelter. Oh, made a narrow escape with the aid of someone new. New ally to the rescue. We're okay. It looks like we shook them off. They just started searching for other prey. Those people just want to kill. It's like the streets are an ocean full of sharks. We're really thankful. You saved us. No one knows if you're safe now or not. Well, we managed to escape that particular crisis, if nothing else. But I should thank you. So, thanks. I guess I did earn your thanks. <laughs> right. She had no obligation to risk herself to try and save someone else. If she was able to lock herself up tight indoors, then her best option would have been to curl up and shut out all other sounds. I'm Marbara Keiji. You? Une is what people call me. I'm Rena. This is Michan and Satko-chan. Nice to meet you. You really did save us at the perfect time. You were lucky, but that doesn't mean you always will be. Well, luck is another kind of strength. Is it just you here, Umi-chan? Any others? There were, but they're not coming back. If she stayed quiet, she would be safe here. Yet that's the sad nature of humanity. Once they gain safety, they want to risk danger. Whether it's wanting to make sure your family is safe or to return home, once a person finds safety, they can't just stay there. The place certainly was a shelter. There were a dozen plastic bottles full of water lined up, and there were about four grocery bags stuffed full of candy bags laying there too. Oh boy, candy. <laughs> they didn't know how many had been here, but as long as they were frugal, they could hole up for three days. When people managed to create a safe space, they want to bring their family and friends into it. That's true. Staying put here and ignoring what you hear outside might be the right answer. But thanks to Unichan, we're all safe. I can't really thank you enough for saving our lives. Are there still many more violent groups like that one? There's more than that. There's plenty. <laughs> Figures. Still, they're not running around in the middle of the night, right? The neighborhood watch and Hinamizawa set up patrols after dark. They're frightened, too. I do doubt they'll let their guard down and start snoring. Even so, it should be a little safer than moving in the middle of the day. The Sonozaki group's office isn't far, right? Well, not in terms of direct distance. We should wait and observe for a bit. There's no need to rush. That's true. Unichan? Could you tell us a bit about what's going on in the city? Telling you won't take that long. Hmm. Switching back to Rika, I guess. Oops. Ooh, I can skip that a bit. Found it. It should open if I do this. Oh, well, what will we do if there's a terrifying ghost trapped in there? <laughs> Then you two can have a staring contest to determine which one's the stronger apparition. Rika! The strange, repetitive sound they heard was coming from the other side of a sturdy door, labeled the emergency storage room. Uh -huh. Someone was slamming themselves against the thick metal door. That idea made the most sense, at least. But why the emergency storage room? Maybe someone was using it as a jail cell? Who? 
When? For whom? Such she. Even I or Yashua sama don't know that. I suppose that's true. The door to the emergency storage room was the type being locked from the outside. Given that something kept hitting it in there, there was probably no way to unlock it from inside. Once she came back with the master key, the sound stopped for a moment. Maybe they were worn out from hitting it so much? Either that, or they had gone quiet as Rika and Hanyu approached and were lying in wait for them. I'm opening it. Uh, anytime you're ready. She inserted the key and slowly turned it. There's no way that an L5 patient was being kept quarantined in here, right? If there was, then the moment she opened it, they could leap out from inside and start attacking her. That won't happen. There's no way Eerie and the others would do something so senseless as locking a victim up in a place like this. Even for the hundred-year-old witch, Rika, it was hard to fight the curiosity of finding out what lay beyond that door. She didn't have any interest in this crazy world, but she could die at any time. So she wanted to see what happened to the world up until the very end. It wasn't some noble desire to watch over its demise, but the slightly wicked curiosity of wanting to see something scary. Is it going to be Sachi? Come on. She slowly opened the heavy door. Through the slight crack came the foul, hot scent of sweat mixed with something rotten. The smell made her imagine something more filthy than frightening. There was a light on inside, and a sweaty man who was collapsed on the floor slowly raised his head. Oh, Tomitake. <laughs> hey, Rikachan. You saved me. What were you doing in a place like that? Who knows? At the very least, it wasn't something I chose. Rika, look at the pipes in the back. Hmm? Handcuffs. Fastened to the pipes at the back of the storage room were a pair of broken handcuffs. He was almost certainly bound up in them before. Just how long had we been held captive in there, though? Judging from his surroundings, it had to have been more than a day. It couldn't be. Had he been locked up in there since his whole commotion started? He was worn down and exhausted, but it looked like he had just been barely held onto in his mind. By the way, has anything happened outside over the past few days? Not much. In fact, it's finally quieted down. Rika. The villagers expressed terminal symptoms one after another. Now it spread beyond the village and into Okonomi as well. That's terrible. What about Takuma-san? Yeah, what about her? <laughs> Speaking of her... <laughs> I haven't seen her since this commotion started. Could you summon Director Iria here at once? Something terrible is going to happen. Something terrible has already happened and ended. No, something even more terrible is going to happen. Takuma-san is planning to spread Hinomizua Syndrome to all of Japan. No, the entire world! <laughs> Apparently, it had all started several days back. Tomitake had already been locked up in here, back when everything was peaceful, before anything had happened. I suppose she was feeding him and so on. Mm. Mm. You awake? Jiro-san? He had been forced to breathe in from an ammonia bottle. Tomitaki's body wavered like heavy lead as he slowly looked up at Takano. He tried to move his legs, but felt a cold, heavy sensation against them. Looking down, there were handcuffs on his ankles that were fastened to the pipes. Takano-san, what kind of joke is this? Joke? <laughs> Heavens no! This is truly a divine revelation! What are you talking about? I've been chosen by God. Yes. This was all a divine revelation. Takuma's eyes looked like she was delirious with fever. Though she herself was probably calmer than ever. Still, to Tomitake's eyes, she looked like she was drunk on some strong liquor 
and caught up in a daydream. I wish you would calm down. Could you explain this so I can understand? Yes. Thinking about it, it wouldn't be that hard to explain in a way you can understand. But I must tell you, even if you don't understand what it means at all. So you still want to tell me then? I'm a little honored. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. You really are a special person, Jiro-san. And you tie this special person up in a place like this? I want you to stay here until the world is finished transforming into a new one. What are you plotting? No plot this time. It's a divine revelation. I've been chosen by God. Tomitake wasn't a fool. He had a vague idea of what Takuma was plotting from that exchange. Don't tell me. You're trying to cause something terrifying to occur, are you? There might be something terrifying indeed. But it's God's revelation. I have a feeling something wonderful is about to happen too. You're not planning to take the virus we're researching out of here, are you? <laughs> I'm positive that all of our research has been for the sake of this day. God has chosen me. He understands my noble purpose. Stop it. I don't know who's instigated this, but that's not a divine revelation. It's the whisper of a devil. A devil? What a cruel thing to say. Perhaps you can't see their divine glory? Well, of course you can. You're just an average person. <laughs> Takuma pulled something out of her pocket and tossed it to Tomotake. It was a box with a syringe and a bottle of medicine. He recognized it. It was the new prophylactic for the Hinomizula syndrome. Though that was only supposed to be in development still. If, if you would like to witness the new world, then inject that into yourself. If you're fortunate, then you'll avoid an acute outbreak. Stop this. You can still turn back from this. Talk this out with me. And undo these handcuffs first. Takuma slowly lifted the attache case, sitting at her feet. It wasn't an ordinary attache case, though. It was a special one, used to transport N-173. If she spread its contents through the air, then a wide range of people would con contract Hinomizawa Syndrome, eventually reach L-5, and cause a terrifying disaster. For Takano, researching the syndrome was her way of proving her grandfather's great work to be true. So it was a holy act, akin to wor worshipping God. He knew that. Yet an outbreak of Hinomizawa syndrome, and the terrifying ruin that would bring about should not be her goal. He couldn't even imagine what sort of delusions had come to possess her. But she was prepared to do it. Without hesitation. See you later, Jiro-san. If you're lucky, we'll meet again. Since this is an emergency storage room, you should find food and water within your reach. Knowing you, you'll be able to take care of those handcuffs too. Even if I lock this door from the outside, right? As long as he had time, then Tomitake was certain he could break out of the handcuffs. But that would grant Takano plenty of time to carry out her terrifying ambition. Wait, hold on Takano-san. Wait! Are you planning to destroy the world? Heavens no. I'm going to save humanity, as God has revealed to me, by letting his cute little children here fly free. That's the whisper of the devil. You mustn't listen to it. I hear the devil is elsewhere. Huh? The devil trying to destroy humanity has already appeared. God told me, and he told me I'm the only one who can stop it. What you're about to do really is the work of the devil. Don't let yourself be fooled by him. Don't worry. After all, God is always with me. Farewell. I'm going to Okonomiya. You're there, right? Yes, I know. <laughs> now we're in the present, I guess. What? How could this be? Oh, well, well. As expected, I guess. That woman never learns. So it's her fault again. What? Her fault again? We're too late? What a disaster. Oh yeah, this is August or whatever. Wait, if it's August, 
That means Takuma was taken out of here. She shouldn't be able to do this. Tomitake was captured right before the incident and had been shut inside here up until today. It was all too late for him to do anything. Takuma had already spread the infection far beyond the village. Maybe she's already spread it to the entire city or even the entire prefecture. Tomitake shook his head many times as Riko described the present situation. The reality was hard for him to accept, but the gruesome sight of the researchers who murdered each other or took their own lives wouldn't permit him to consider otherwise. Tomitake entered the security room and started fiddling with the radio, but it didn't look like he was going to be able to contact anyone outside. According to the emergency manual, in the event of an outbreak of the Hinamizo syndrome, they are to employ jamming waves throughout the region in order to prevent the spread of chaos. Of course, the phone lines were down too, so there was no way to get the crucial information about Takuno's involvement to those outside. Apparently, they've already escalated to Hazard Level X2. What does that mean? It means the syndrome has spread to Shichiboni City. At present, the city is quarantined off from the outside, and all of the bridges have been blocked off. Hopefully, Tokyo manages to do something with that time. So all we can do is wait? Unfortunately, that's not the case. We can't leave Takuma-san on the loose. She had said, A devil has appeared to destroy humanity. I'm heading to Okonomiya. That's where you are, isn't it? I don't know what she's calling a devil, but maybe it's Une. <laughs> We can't afford to let her have her way any more than she already has, right? That's right. Takuma-san is most likely still within the city. If the bridges have been blocked off, then Takuma can't get out either. If she's planning to take N-173 and spread it beyond the city, then she can't afford to be captured. She should still be in Okonomiya. Tobitake, I'll help too. It's dangerous. You should hide down here. Right now, Okonomiya is dangerous even for you, Tomitake. There are a lot of young people in Okonomiya. They'll be much more dangerous after handing their heart over to the demon. I'm the Queen Carrier. If I'm not mistaken, I should have the power to calm down nearby infected. Now that you mention it, I suppose that's true. Trying to be a gentleman toward me is less important than capturing Takuno and preventing the further spread of harm. Still, if anything were to happen to you, the worst possible outcome is already happening. Even if I were to die, things wouldn't get any worse than they already are. Preventing this situation was exactly why they had to prevent disaster from befalling Rika. But their worst fear, a mouse outbreak of level 5 symptoms, was already taking place without Rika's death. It made sense to him. Logically, the situation couldn't worsen. Besides, if Takuma remained at large, it was likely that things would become even more disastrous. Either she would spread Hinomizawa syndrome throughout Japan, or this thing she called a devil would move to interfere. If they are a devil for Takuma, then the enemy of our enemy is our ally. <laughs> you have a point there. Alright, we don't have time to waste on debates. Don't stop me, Hanya. I'm doing this to save the world, you know? Oh, well, it looks like you're enjoying this. Let's go, to find Takano-san. <laughs> Tomitake borrowed a car parked at the clinic. In this world, not dissimilar from a zombie apocalypse, a car was the same as a moving shelter. So long as no zombies sprang up from the back seat. <laughs> Or the trunk. The car was heading into Okonomiya. Rika and Hanyu were relaxing in the back seat. I was planning to wait quietly for all this to settle down back in Himizawa, but I've changed my mind. If this is Takuma's plot, then I have to interfere. Still, what on earth could this devil of hers be? Who knows? Maybe someone like us. Silence. Hanyu? Yes. 
Apparently, it is someone like us. <laughs> huh? What? Though they had just been inside the car, it felt like their souls were floating up out of their bodies. Next thing they knew, Rika and Hanyu found themselves in a strange, dreamlike world. What was happening? That sensation? Hanyu's expression had grown solemn, like when she spoke of her past thousands of years ago. That was when something akin to mist began to flicker and coalesce into human shape. What? Who? It's someone I hoped to never see again. Even the hundred-year witch Rika was left bewildered. Because she had never heard Hanyu utter those words before. Someone Hanyu never wanted to see again. Human-shaped mist. An inhuman being taking human form. To think we should meet again. Tamara Hime no Mikuto. Oh. Leader of the Horned People, Hanyu. I've had no desire to meet you with you once more. I could return those exact same words. Why must it see you like this again? You aren't usually so hostile. <laughs> We're enemies who refuse to accept one another. You must not trust her. I guess you monsters hate your own kind. <laughs> I'll not permit you to call me the same as that demon hiding her horns. Know your place, priestess of the horned people. Rika got a sudden headache from her sharp gaze. Her hardened eyes carried not only supernatural power, but enough rejection and scorn to cause physical pain. Thinking back, Rika had only received constant respect. No matter how many hundreds of deaths or years she had lived through, she had never faced down such a hostile gaze before. Rika could only gulp hard in the face of that. Honey, do you understand why I have appeared before you? <laughs> what do you make of this disaster below us? Slowly, the mist cleared beneath their feet. Finally, Rika understood. They weren't inside mist, but inside a cloud. Below them was a sight like one might see from an airplane. Even without straining their eyes, they could tell the city of Okonomiya was below. Black smoke rose from various points in the city, and they could see a dark haze hanging over it. When they focused their eyes even more, they could see the people with who gave their hearts over the, to, the, to the demons killing each other in the streets. What an awful sight. Shudder with the weight of your own sin. All of this is the work of your kind. No shame, leader of the horned people. Yeah, how dare you cause this directly. From the perspective of humans like Rika, Takano was at fault. But from the perspective of inhuman beings like Hanyu, the disaster below was all Hanyu's fault. After all, N173 was Hanyu. It was the horned people. <laughs> Hanyu bit her bottom lip, unable to refute her claims. <laughs> Takano had conducted the research to turn the horned people ferocious. Hanyu wasn't to blame for that. But that being said, these inhuman beings wouldn't allow a human to be blamed for that sin. <laughs> we shall take responsibility. With our own hands. You will not. That is unnecessary now. Know that your tainted horn people will not be allowed to corrupt our lands any further. That's quite the rude statement coming from someone who's as much of a monster. Silence. Know your place, child of man. You are but the priestess of the tainted horn people. Rika's head throbbed with pain again when Tamara Hime no Mikoto glanced at her. There was no doubt she was the same as Hanyu, but it was no longer even necessary to explain that the two beings were beings at total odds with one another. 
I never wish to speak to you again by any means. I, the leader of the Horn people, and my priestess shall take responsibility for ending this tragedy. You will not. Go home, taste one. I shall take responsibility for resolving the disaster brought upon my people's lands. You should return to your land of Hinamizwa and be ashamed of your immature charges. Now be gone, Hanyu and Priestess. Even though she was the one who called them there. A violent shock shook her body, and the very next moment she had returned to the back seat of the car. It was all like a daydream. However, it was undoubtedly real for them. That had been the cold reunion between inhuman beings after centuries, or possibly even millennia. Who on earth was that? Tamarhime no Mikoto, the leader of the previous residents who ruled these lands before we even ar ever arrived here. Before you arrived there? Hmm. So that means it's her fault then. I see. So there's no reason you'd get along, then. We were refugees, and it was a miracle that we finally reached this land. It was an incredible blessing to us. Yet we were coldly rejected by Tamara. That was something that had never been recorded, even in the most ancient documents within the ritual storehouse. It was truly the oldest of myths, known only to Hanyu. We wandered space for a long time in search of a place to live peacefully. After a journey so long, it could drive one mad. We finally made it to this beautiful blue planet. Just what on earth are you people? I've always wondered that. You're certainly not some abstract being like a god. You're something that Eerie and the others could have studied under a microscope, aren't you? The cause of the Hinamizawa syndrome was a virus. But there's no way a virus could be sentient. Yet it seemed to be the true identity of Hanyu's horned people. Rika's guess was correct. Some science fiction stories have posed the idea that humanity is nothing more than a parasite upon Earth. So in that sense, the horned people are no different from humans. Humans are parasites upon the Earth. And they are parasites upon the human brain. Which means that to the horned people, the human brain is their land. If humanity continues to destroy the environment, then eventually it will kill the Earth, and everything living upon it will die along with it. That's why humanity must be kind to Earth and strive to live in harmony with it. The same goes for the Horned People. If they cannot coexist with humanity, they'll cease to exist at all. In that analogy, Hinamizawa Syndrome is their destruction of the environment. When the human becomes paranoid and mad, resorting to self-injury, acts of violence, or suicide, then the horned people die with them. Once her reasoning reached that point, Rika finally understood a bit of, of, of what Tamara had said at the end, calling them immature. Tamara Hime no Mikoto was most likely the leader of another supernatural parasite upon humanity. Yet aside from the Hinamizawa syndrome, she had never heard any report of similar symptoms anywhere else in Japan which meant that Tamara's race of people had obtained a means of coexisting peacefully with humanity. And they don't want to share it. However, Hanyu's horned people had yet to obtain that same skill. That's why they were declared immature. Still, you can argue otherwise as well. Sure, there was a disaster in Onigafuji village back in ancient times. Yet they've spent many decades developing unique practices to control themselves and prevent any symptoms. But then a villain, Takuno, came and interfered, intentionally conducting research to turn them into a deadly virus. This incident in Hinamizawa wasn't caused by Hanyu or the Horned People. This whole commotion was caused by Takuno developing N173, a new race of ferocious Horned People, and spreading them elsewhere. It doesn't look like that stubborn monster is capable of understanding. She never listens to anyone. She's always just cold and inflexible. From her point of view, we're no different from the virus Takuno spread, and thus equally guilty. But from our perspective, it's all Takuno's fault. She's the one who caused this great disaster. I won't be able to calm down until I punch that woman in the face. I just hope Tamara doesn't get in our way. 
It would seem the land of Hinomizawa was the land of the Horn people, while all the other lands belonged to Tamaro's people. Just what is Tamaro's people? Also, if she's also a human parasite, does that mean everyone in Japan is? <laughs> We're about to come up on the town. I don't know what we'll find here, so be careful. I know. I'll use Oyashiro Summon's power to make sure none of the bad people come to us. It'd be better if we never have to test that power of yours at all. <laughs> Tomitake, how do you plan to hunt down Takano in a town this large? Right now, Okunumi is a dangerous town for Takano-san too. I'm just curious about something. Let me check. The achievements for this game. Can I find it? I don't think I can find it. Which is that. Even if she brought a handgun along, it won't be enough to really protect her. The mountain dogs were annihilated. Oh, they were. <laughs> That's funny. I just want to check that and that. Let's see. Achievements, please. There we are. So there is a lot of achievements. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot. Probably two weeks then. Right now, Takano was nothing more than a lone woman. She wouldn't be able to last if she was attacked by the murderers wandering around with their terminal symptoms. She's probably taking shelter with a colony of evacuees. Well, it's still dizzying to think about hunting her down. If you're able to use your powers to uncover Takano-san, that would be perfect. <laughs> Can you do it, Hanya? If I could, I already would be. Oh, oh. Well. Another possibility would be finding a means of contacting people outside of here. If we're able to contact Tokyo, then we'll have plenty of other options. I don't get why the game volume's so low. What is it? BGM. Sound. Well, that sound is loud. <laughs> that is very loud. The raging thing about Tomitake was that he could act like normal, completely unfazed, even in emergencies like this. That was probably thanks to the effects of the new prophylactic Takano had administered. He actually took it? I don't know what Takano was thinking. Why did she let Tomitake live? She should have predicted that he'd become her most difficult adversary in this situation. Even after living a thousand years, there's still the occasional human completely beyond comprehension. I need a bit more. She's one of those people. A bit more down. That's no, not too much. True. The one thing we can be sure of is that if we let her have her way, then disaster will spread to all of Japan. No, all the world. I wonder, if that happens, will all the monsters of this world claiming to be gods come to ring you out? Oh, whoa, whoa. Takuma was talking about wanting to become a god herself. Then there's you and that Tamara Hime no Nomikoto. I see, the human world doesn't have a say in this matter anymore. Most likely, if Hanyu is to be called a god, then there must be a disturbance in their world. Humans have just been caught up in their mess. The more I think about it, the more I realized we're the only ones who can stop this incident. <laughs> Skipped a bit. Alright, the BGM is at a good volume. From what I can see, the office of the Sonozaki group still seems to be safe. Mion and the others had traveled along the building's wall, stopping at one point to pick up some opera glasses, to use them as binoculars. <laughs> After a bit of surveillance, they had a good idea of what actions they could take near the walls, as well as the movements of the surrounding rioters. Figures they'd be behaving the same as ne Hinamizawa's neighborhood watch. Generally, they'd take up positions hiding behind the barricades, but every time they hear something, they shout and race toward it in a rampage. It's ridiculous that they think they're acting reasonably. 
But now we know their behavior patterns. It also means they were at their hottest back when we first ran into them. It's not like they're racing around all the time. Right. For us, that's big news all on its own. Either way, we'll be unable to do anything without crossing the river. It's a river. We can't go any further without crossing. <laughs> Repeat the same exact line. So we go quietly or we go loudly. One or the other. Let's use the cover of night to sneak across. They'll probably set up watches, but it'll still be easier than in broad daylight. We're lucky your injury's lighter than we thought. Thanks to that, we have time on our side. Most of the pain from Mion's injury came from the pain of joints and tendons that she sprained while protecting Rena. Fortunately, the wounds that caused bleeding were all shallow. Oh, okay. <laughs> What are you going to do, Unichan? You coming with us? It'll probably be a little lonely here waiting for help that may never come. She's the devil. Everyone else said the same thing before leaving and getting killed, didn't they? I can understand how you feel. It's not like I don't want to leave here because it's scary. Do you trust us? It's not that I don't. The more I watch you all in action, the less it feels dangerous to stay with you. Every one of our club's members is strong individually, but together we're invincible. If you're willing to trust us, then we'll definitely protect you. Though that assumes some guarantee that the Sonozaki Group's office is safer than it is here. That's not an issue. They keep all kinds of emergency ra reserves in there, so they can hole up if anything bad happens. Your family is seriously good at preparing for things. C -c -c Our family's policy is to finish fights by the time they start. We owe you for saving us, Unesan. So we'll repay that debt to you. We'll make sure to bring you somewhere safe. Get some water, finally. It's not like I'm happy. <laughs> that little girl was stuck all alone in this unprecedented disaster, drinking some water. Of course she'd be anxious. At first, we thought she was silent and expressionless, but she was slowly opening up to our energetic club members. This young girl wasn't originally the silent type. She just closed her heart off a bit in order to protect it from the shock of this disaster. Where's your home, Unichan? It's not like I lived in this town. Huh? Then where is your home? Don't tell me. You got caught up in this mess while hanging out with someone in Okonomiya? That's... You must have been real worried. Is it far from here? It's not close, but all the bridges are broken, and I can't get home. I see. That's so sad. But there's one fortunate thing about that. Right, I suppose there is. Your parents and family is fine. <laughs> Your family's not caught in this uproar, so they're all safe. Isn't that right? That's right. That was the one saving grace for her. She knew for certain that her family and her home were safe. The government had destroyed all the tunnels and bridges leading into Shishiboni City, so it was physically cut off. That basically meant they were admitting that it would at least take time to determine a solution to this problem. On the other hand, though, since they went that far, they were also able to keep the damage from spreading beyond the city. Those living in the city were probably depressed or enraged believing that the government had abandoned them. But in terms of the big picture, that was the right call. Thanks to that decision, Une's home was safe. She still had hope. That was how she was able to keep going this long. Even amidst crushing despair. Once we all un understood what she was going through, we all looked down for a moment 
and then clenched our fists with a growing sense of purpose. If you hadn't rescued us, who knows what would have happened to us. It's very likely that some of us would have died. The debt we owe you for saving our lives can't be called a cheap one. Right, I'm going to be right back to remove the cat. going to run that break. Right, I'm on mute and continue. Yeah, that's right, Oni Chan. Us club members will do everything in our within our power to ensure you make it home. Thank you for that. Operation Crossing will commence tomorrow at 4 a.m. We'll use the cover of night to cross the main street in one go and reach the office. I'll be taking the lead and scouting ahead to prepare for the worst. I don't want to think about it, but we can't deny the possibility that everyone in the office has gone crazy too. While Mion warned us about that, she seemed confident it wasn't the case. She was probably able to confirm they retained their sanity when she was observing the office with the opera glasses. We all went to bed early so we'd be in top condition. Satoko set a trap to detect intruders, but it was hard to sleep while fearing the sound of that empty can. <laughs> Skip a bit. Are we back at Tomitake, or...? Even so, I definitely fell asleep at some point. Then, I woke up to Mion poking me. It's time to get up. Mmm, oh yeah. I'm surprised you woke up on time without any alarms. Michan said she didn't sleep. You were the one who slept soundest of us all. Good grief, how bold. <laughs> it should be pitch black, but it isn't. You're right. Moonlight is surprisingly bright. If it really was the moonlight, it might have been a bit romantic. The traffic lights and other illumination were still on, lighting up the city without rest. Unlike Kinomizawa, Okonomiya never had nights of pitch black darkness. I didn't know if we should consider that fortunate or disadvantageous for our stealth. Occasionally, there were glimpses of light from flashlights on the main street filled with rows of unoccupied vehicles. They had set up a watch, just as we predicted. But regardless, their guard was still thinner than it was in broad daylight. Okay. We can do this. We're going to be okay, aren't we? Just leave it to us. There's nothing to fear. We'll cross it easily. We have our secret weapon, too. I hope we manage to do this quietly. If we rush in and make a lot of noise, we'll cause issues for those in the office, too. That's true. From our reconnaissance, it looks like the Sonozaki office was cutting off all contact with the outside. They had set up barricades and they weren't interacting with the rioters at all. If they had surrendered their hearts to demons like the rioters had, then they wouldn't be setting up defenses, and they'd be fully participating in the hunt for infected. But if they were to rush in there while being chased by rioters, then they'd say that the Sonozaki group is harboring the infected, and end up causing a rup an uproar. We had to strive for complete stealth. Uni slowly unlocked the door leading outside, opening that door here in Okonomiya, where the streets were basically an ocean teeming with sharks, meant facing the same fear as trying to step into a lion's cage. It's not like I'm not afraid. 
I'll take the lead. If I fail, retreat quickly, just as we planned. Don't even think about trying to save me. Got it? That goes both ways. If I sprain my foot again, abandon me. We really will this time, so be careful, Cage Coon. <laughs> Double cagey. Yeah. The operation will now begin. If something happens, leave it to me. Satsuko was carrying a radio-controlled car she borrowed from somewhere on the second floor. She tested moving it in a straight line with the remote controls, then set it, set it up to drag an empty can fastened behind it. It could be our decoy if the worst happened. However, that sound would draw an unwanted attention. It wasn't a trump card to help us reach the office. It was a trump card to buy us a chance to retreat if the operation failed. The success rate of the Milan's operation was roughly 95%, but we still couldn't bring the chance of failure down to zero. It was Milan's policy to imagine all possibilities and prepare for each of them, to, so to ensure that the worst possible outcome not catch them off guard. She gave the go sign to Satko's remote control plan. I'm heading out. Make sure you stay a fair bit away from me. Right, because she's going to go to the office and make sure they're okay, and probably contact them. We carefully opened the door, and once we were certain that everything was quiet around us, Mion slipped outside. Unlike Kinomizawa, everything in Okonomi was covered in concrete, so even the faintest sounds echoed. If you stepped on a small rock on the asphalt, you could hear it from rather far away. Not really. Well, it might be better going barefoot. No, definitely not. Mion took off her shoes. No matter how carefully we walked, the hard rubber soles couldn't silence the sound of pebbles scraping asphalt. Even with socks on, it would hurt a city kid to walk on the surface barefoot. Yeah. But for us Hinomizawa kids who always chased each other around, climbing trees barefoot, walking on asphalt with no shoes was nothing. It's time to see whether or not Keiichi-san, our former city kid, can tolerate going barefoot. I've trained myself up a lot by now. Don't take me lightly. Unichan, are you okay going barefoot? It hurts. I'm sorry. Just bear with it for a little while, okay? <laughs> Milan poked her head out of the alley and checked on the river with rows of unoccupied cars. It was too easy to see across the wide sidewalk. We'd have to cut across it in one go and duck behind a row of cars. The self-proclaimed watch also realized that clear view meant it was the best place for keeping a lookout. We could see them shining a beam of light straight down the sidewalk every now and then with their flashlights. They were excessively frightened and were seeking out an enemy. If they sensed even the slightest presence, they'd cause a lot of noise and summon their friends. This is good. I've been looking for a thrill like this. Milan boldly licked up the sweat trailing down her nose, and smiled. She used hand signs to signal her friends to wait and calculated her timing. The watch's lights were restless. They wandered back and forth, glancing everywhere in fidgety emotions. Their fear left them needing to light up every shadow, so that anxiety created plenty of openings. Now. Quick and nimble, like a cat, Milan dashed across the sidewalk and ducked into the row of cars. It went so quickly and easily that all her prior attention seemed misplaced. Caging the others and the other heaved a sigh of relief as they watched from the shadows. Keiji, the second one up, was about to follow after her, but Mion gave them the sign to hold. It looked like she wanted to be carefully cross the river of cars and check out the sidewalk on the opposite bank. Shoot, that's bad. When she had scouted it from the roof right before commencing the operation, there wasn't anyone over there. But at some point, three men from the watch had taken up posts on the opposite shore. They were heading right towards her. She wasn't exposed just yet. They were just walking around, shining lights randomly at the cars. Mion calmly found a truck with a high frame and slid underneath it. You'd think they'd check that, too, 
It's okay. It's okay. They haven't spotted us. If they had noticed us, would they be walking so carelessly? Even if she was 99% certain she was safe, she could feel herself sweating. Pathetic, Sonazaki Mion. To think I'd be sweating this badly over a little hide-and-seek. Make sure you don't overlook any infected. All their brains are damaged. Plus, they'll try to bite us and spread the virus further. You're the ones that, with damaged brains, though. Mion smirked. <laughs> Still, once her feet stopped in front of the truck she hid under, her smile froze. D did they find her? We're done for. Calm down. They're not acting like they have. They're getting in? The truck? <laughs> the men from the watch climbed up into the bed of the truck Miona had hidden on there. Apparently, there were folding chairs or something inside the truck bed. The men then sat down on them, which meant the men had taken position directly above Miona. She was practically a bug pinned in place. Hey, seriously? Sweat dripped from Mion's forehead. Keiichi and the others understood the situation just as well. Mion couldn't move at all. There was no guaranteeing they wouldn't hear anything when she crawled out from under the truck. Not only that, but Mion couldn't see what was going on above her at all. Even if she were to slip out without making a sound, there was no guarantee they wouldn't happen to look around and catch sight of her. Mion couldn't move from there until they left that post. It's not like I know what to do. Is it finally time for our secret weapon? Only as a last resort. We could save Mion, but that would cause way too much noise. Still, get it ready. Satsuko nodded, set a remote controlled car on the sidewalk and fastened the empty can to it. Once we let it loose, it was sure to draw their attention. Either way, the operations failed. We need to create an opening for Mion to make her escape. It'll be better to try again later. I agree. We just had bad timing. Let's try again. Wouldn't it be better if you had an empty can and just throw it, rather than doing that? The club members knew exactly when to pull out thanks to the thanks to our many dangerous club activities. Naturally, Mion was thinking the same thing. Keiichi and the others would probably create a chance for her to escape. She'd have to slip out in that moment. Still, they had to wait for a time. There was still a chance the men in the bed above her would stand back up and go off somewhere else. Even if they managed to retreat. Causing an uproar now would make it even more difficult to cross the river a second time. Even though Mion practically had a pin pushed through her heart, we had to stay calm and wait for our chance to at victory. We should get Unichan back to safety first. She wasn't used to being barefoot. She might have trouble running full tilt if it came down to that. Keiichi-kun, take Unichan and secure our retreat. Satsuko-chan, watch my back. Leave it to me. Cage san you've got a great responsibility. I know. I'll leave this to you two. Let's go, Uni-chan. Yes. Keiichi took Une and left for the time being. He thought he'd face death in Hinamizawa, but Hinamizawa is full of nothing but old people. Plus, they had a home ground advantage there. But they were playing in an away game under different rules in Okonomiya. <laughs> if I'd known this was going to happen, I would have played around here more. <sighs> Uni was panting. No one could blame her. Things were so tense. Her breathing was ragged from both exhaustion and fear. Let's rest a moment and catch our breath. <sighs> Thank you. While Uni calmed her breathing, Keiichi sharpened his senses and searched for anyone nearby. Hmm. 
He sensed one. Not good. Someone's coming. Huh? I hear several footsteps. It's the watch. There was hardly anywhere to hide. If they screwed up and got caught, then their escape route would be cut off. They couldn't take any risks. There was no other streets. They had to turn back and pray the men went somewhere else. But the main street was the primary artery for their watch circuit. There was a high probability they would head directly towards Rena and the others. Let's head back. We can't run into them here. <laughs> We're going back again? <laughs> Attacking us from both sides. That might happen. Anyway, let's head back. Cage's prediction was spot on. They didn't go down any other street and headed straight for the main road. There were four young men about college age carrying bent metal bats. At this rate, they'd attack Renna and the others from the rear. We're pincered in? That's bad. Well, isn't this interesting? I hardly thought I'd get to feel as much suspense as I do during club activities. There's no way back. So then what do we do? You don't mean... Do you? If we can't go back, then we have to go forward. We'll have to use our remote control trap to draw the enemy's attention, and then seize that chance to advance. It was a dangerous strategy. We'd probably be able to get out of this pinch. But once they start shouting, the rest of the watch will wake up all at once. If we get unlucky... If we get get unlucky enough to run into them on our way forward, then we'll be trapped like rats. If it's just two or three people, then we can handle them somehow with a club member's full might. But if the uproar brings a huge crowd chasing after us, then we'll just be kids unable to fight back. Still, even with a few misfortunes thrown our way, this wasn't a game with no chance of victory. Satoko-chan, ready your trap. Ready wherever you are. Sidewalk's clear. We can cross now. Go, Satoko-chan, do it. Leave it to me. Let's go, Uni-chan. Run. It's not like I can't run. <laughs> I just gotta check. Is it just like... Bits of knee. <laughs> Let's see, right here. Uh, and I fucking I know this. <laughs> I'm gonna check more of that after. So that's starting to bother me a bit. <laughs> we all crossed at once and ducked into a row of cars, but there's no way to prevent the men in the truck from noticing our dash. The moment they looked over to see what it was, Satsuko's remote control trap activated. The car dragged the empty can fastened to it, making a loud metal noise as it raced down the sidewalk. What? What's that sound? They're running! After them! It has to be in the infected. Their paranoia and fear turned into violent aggression and anger. The men in the truck leapt onto car roofs and car hoods chasing after the loud remote control car. The silence of night was shattered, with angry cries and whistles blasting from here and there. The city's madness was awakened, but Mion was released from her prison under the truck. What are you doing? It's still too early for that. We were pincered. We had to set it off. Unisan, time to show us what you're made of. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> just running. We can't go back. There's no more coming that way. Or there is more? There's more. One after another, riders with bloodshot eyes dashed out of the alley everyone had just been hiding in. There must have been a building or something housing them all nearby. The option of turning back and returning to safety was cut off. We had to move forward. If we have to go forward, then forward we go. There's not much distance left. 
I just pray that the Sonazaki group hasn't forgotten what you look like. <laughs> Kei-chan, you sure say some funny things. Don't let your guard down. We can't relax until we've made it inside the Sonazaki group's office. Agreed. There's still a chance Shion-san might say, Who the heck are you? <laughs> True. More importantly, Mion, don't forget your promise to belly dance for us. You said you would pro when Unichan lowered that ladder. <laughs> Did I say that? <sighs> Unichan, hang in there. Just a little further. It's right around that corner. Huh? I think Mion completely let her guard down. All we had left was to cut the tape at the finish line after our final spurt. I'm sure that's what she thought. But the finish line wasn't something we could cut through. Huh? What's going on? What is this? The street was sealed off with barbed wire mesh. Either the Sonazaki group did it to secure their safety in front of their office, or the rioters did it to keep infected from coming through. But we didn't know which. Regardless, the reality was that the street was blocked off, with the office right in front of us. If we had known about this barricade ahead of time, our strategy would have been greatly different. We could only call, call it bad luck. It was in a perfect blind spot from our the angle Mion had when scouting it with the opera glasses. And that slight blind spot unfortunately brought a second misfortune with this barricade. It wasn't impossible to climb over if you were prepared to hurt yourself on the barbed wire. But we couldn't force that on Nune, who didn't have the resolve of us club members. Alternate routes? There's one. If we swing around from the alley across. That was when bright beams of light shone upon us all. Who are you all? There, it's the infected. Our blood froze. We were finished. Uni couldn't bear the fair any longer. Let out a piercing scream. We're out of options. Our opponents had us beaten in build, ferocity, and numbers as well. The rioters gathered together one after another, surrounding us and trapping us in the barricaded alley. T guns? That was when several dry shots rang out. Mion quickly shouted down and pushed our heads to the ground. The rioters, who didn't recognize the sun sound of gunshots, stood there bewildered. Is it... Oh, it's Tomitake? Gentlemen, that's enough. Unlawful lynching is unacceptable, no matter the circumstance. It was the sound of Tomitake firing into the air with a submachine gun he took out of the Erie Institute's security room. <laughs> Maybe the rioters thought it was just a model gun or something, but they showed no fear and only glared at Tomitake for interrupting their hunt. With Okonomiya's medical facilities paralyzed right now, even a shot to the leg could prove fatal. Tomitake didn't want to shoot, but he gulped as the rioters proved unfazed. I don't want to shoot you all. Leave this to me. Honey. Comrades of mine, calm your spirits. I am Oyasha Osama, your leader. Hanyu's stern words rang out solely for er, un inhuman errors. The riders stopped and stood still, their mouths wide open. Eventually, they sat down directly on the ground and waited absent mindedly. Even if Takano had modified them to be more ferocious, they were still Hanyu's brethren. They couldn't escape the power of her words. The eyes of Mion and the others went wide with shock, but they realized this was their now chance to get out alive. Everyone, go now! What's this? What's going on? It's Oyashiro power. Nipa! <laughs> Thank you for rescuing us, Rikachan, Tomitake-san. We heard the commotion. We made the right choice rushing over. What were you doing out, all doing out here? The office of the Sonazaki group is just beyond here. We weren't aware of the barricade and got cornered like rats. Pathetic. You cut it that close with my sis on your side? Shion! Shion, Kasai, and a few other men in black outfits approached from behind the barricade. Every one of them carried a gun, but none of them had the ferocious expressions of the rioters. 
Seems the Sonozaki group had retained their sanity and focused on holing up inside. Please, give us a break, will you? We don't want to get involved with those crazies. We're sorry for causing such a stir. If you're safe, Shion-san, then we have nothing to fear anymore. That's right. I'm more reliable than ten of my sister all by myself. Kasai, open it for them. Come in, everyone. Kasai unlocked the padlock on the chain securing the barricade's doors shut. Still, what on earth is going on? What happened to them? What on earth? You don't need to worry about them. If you leave them alone, they'll eventually wander off. Now, now, why don't we just appreciate this chance granted to us through Oyashira-sama's miracles? <laughs> Come on, Umi-chan, you're safe now. There's nothing to worry about now that we have Shion-san with us, too. That's right. Satsuko understands, at least. By the way, who's this girl? <laughs> Hello there. She's Umi-chan. She saved our lives. What's the matter, Hanyu? She's the devil. <laughs> You're... We all slipped through the barricade and were welcomed into the Sonazaki group's office. Yet that sight was being observed from far away through binoculars. Takuma? <laughs> I found you. That's the girl. The Sonazaki group's office had been turned into a shelter for the local residents. We could see the town folk lying down here and there, huddled under blankets. You could say that the Sonazaki group is this region after all. Under my mom's orders, we've been taking in people with nowhere to go since the chaos started. What do you mean, people with nowhere to go? She means people just like Unijan. Those that come here for work or visited for pleasure. There are a lot of people from outside of Okonomiya that caught, caught up in this mess. The Watch went after those with nowhere else to go first. We could have fought against them, but Akane-san ordered us to avoid that. So after securing as many people as they could, they built up their surroundings with those barricades to limit their contact with the Watch and prevent any further trouble. To the Watch, all outsiders were the infected. If they knew so many outsiders were being sheltered here, there would be big trouble. Is this place safe? I can guarantee it's the safest place in Okonomiya. The community center was the main shelter at first, but that place has collapsed. So this is what's left. Collapsed? You know what they say about too many cooks. What started as just fighting over leadership led to murder. It's terrifying. I see. The leadership here is solid, so you've managed to establish order and keep people from heading, handing their hearts over to the demons. Impressive. So are the police and such still operating then? No. They're scattered across the city responding to riots, and there are lies going around that they're harboring infected. This situation's beyond anything the police were prepared for. There's no way they can handle it. That said, you were brave out there, Tomitake. Where did you get such a wonderful gun? Well, I just happened to pick it up. <laughs> you know, that's not one that amateurs could handle. You're a man of many mysteries. <laughs> Rika? Rika? What's the matter? Huh? Rika-chan's not here? Lui chan has gone, too. I thought I saw those two talking over there just a moment ago. What do you mean, Hanyu? What's your issue with this girl? Quiet. I'm speaking to her right now. Hmm? What are you saying? Who on earth is this uni girl? The sound of a tuning fork echoed in Rika's head. The tone gradually changed. Almost like it was being well-tuned. <laughs> Rika understood. 
This was a conversation between inhuman beings. It was like they were using a radio. They were searching for the right wavelength to allow mutual conversation. Which meant this Umi girl had to be the devil. This is Hanyu, leader of the Horned People. Who are you? That was when both tones began to resonate. A bright light enveloped everything. The moment that light cleared away, Rika, Hanyu, and Une were floating in the world of inhuman beings. The eyes of the young girl named Une occasionally took on the same light. On the same delight that dwelled within Hanyu's. I was certain this girl was someone like me and Hanyu. Some inhuman being. Hanyu stared long into Une's eyes, waiting for her response. I am Une. I am afraid. There's nothing to fear. We have no intention of fighting anyone. What people do you come from? <laughs> what followed in response wasn't words, but something conducted through telepathy. Various images were practically forced into Rika's head, like she was being compelled to daydream. The ocean of stars in space, her blue earth shining in the distance. Apparently, Une was something that had only recently arrived on Earth. She had finally arrived at this place, land, after a long journey, just as Hanyu's people had. So that's the case. After your long journey, you finally... I was frozen in that pitch black ocean, and I finally reached this land. Yet, Rika finally realized it. She was terrified. She had finally arrived here, and now she was anxious as to whether she could live safely or not. It wasn't unreasonable. From her perspective as an inhuman being, it was far too dangerous in Okunomiyo with the current uproar. The people turned ferocious by N-173 were killing each other in a sight out of hell. It was far too sad for her to receive such a welcome after finally reaching this land after a long frozen journey through space. Hanyu then followed up by sending Une images of what she knew. For a while, Rika's head was flooded with both of their passing images, her mind like a television screen, flickering between channels. Then they finally understood each other's upbringing, circumstances, and present situation. Rika was also able to convert those con concepts into human words, and understand it vaguely. First off, she understood that Une was the same as Ta Hanyu and Tamara, an inhuman being. She was one of the inhuman people from space who lived within humans, just as humans lived on Earth. She reached this planet just the other day. However, that was according to said inhuman being's perception of time, so it might have been several years. Her body had finally acclimated to Earth, and she had just regained self-awareness. She was more of a seed as she drifted through space and only regained her self-awareness after taking root here on Earth and finally budding. Rika also understood the special nature of Umi's people. The special nature of Hanyu's horned people drove people to paranoia when they grew unstable and caused their hearts to become possessed by those demons. That was a disadvantage for them when trying to coexist with humanity, and it was a problem both Hanyu, Tamara, and the horned people recognized. That problem is also the aspect that Takuno showed interest in. In Uni's case, her people carried no such disadvantage. They were much better adapted to coexisting with humanity than Hanyu's people were. So unlike you, they're the type that Tamara would have welcomed. There's no way Tamara Hime, Hime no Mikuto would welcome any new arrivals. To her, both Uni and I are equally terrifying invaders. Oni's people possessed strength, nearly equal to Hanyu's. Strength? The image that's pouring into my head is the strength of a plant's roots. Fragile flowers that bloom beautifully in a flower garden will sometimes be overtaken by wildflowers with powerful roots. It's that same strength. In Hanyu's world, their people were better described with the concept of plants than animals. Yes, even in the world of plants, that was survival of the fittest. Hanyu and Une had very strong power to survive. Their peoples were hardy species with strong roots. So what about Tamara's people? 
the ones that view you as an enemy? Her people are much weaker than mine. However, that's no one's fault, nor is it fate. It's just the special nature we were born with. To those in these inhuman beings, Earth was a big flower bed. They were all trying to sow their seeds and allow their species to flourish. In the past, Thomas people were the only flowers blooming in the flower bed of Earth. Then Hanyu species showed up, and with their strong reproductive ability, they quickly dried up Tama's people and increased their population. So, of course, from Tamahime no Mikoto's perspective, they were invaders. On top of that, Hanyu species posed the risk of destroying the flower bed if they grew unstable. Nothing could survive if the flower bed was destroyed. So that's why Hanyu's people agreed to confine themselves to Hinamizawa, the flower bed best suited for them, until they were able to gain the power to coexist with their flower bed. Yet now, this Une, a species with the same amount of strength, has once again entered the flower bed. Fortunately, Uni's people will not harm the flower bed. However, they possess the strength to easily wipe out Tama's people. We have no such intentions. We just want a little bit of land for ourselves. I understand how you feel. I support you in this as well, as one who has also crossed the ocean of stars. In that case, she's just arrived at the worst possible time. It's hard to imagine Tamara welcoming another species, with Hanyu's people running rampant like they are now. I'm scared. We simply want to bloom quietly in peace. Is there no land beyond Tamara's reach? Nearly all the land of Japan belongs to Tamara's people. Even if she were to leave Japan, there are other peoples living in those lands too. So the earth is like a full apartment complex with no vacancies. But I believe Tamara Hime no Mikoto's people are claiming too much. We must respect those who lived here before us, but they should share the land. Tamara's a bully for monopolizing it, oh. Why don't you just go all Sengoku era and compete for the land? Survival of the fittest is the law of nature, right? Because that would lead to something terrible. Our flower bed in this very planet would meet their end, oh, oh. Now that you mention it, you and Une are about equally strong, right? What would happen if you fought? I, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight either. There's no point in fighting her anyway, because our strength is equal. Meaning what? In our case, the flower bed would go to the fastest one, Ow. Oh. I don't want to fight. So you're saying that the people of Hinamizawa can't be infected by Une, right? That's right. And likewise, the humans with Une's parasite can't come down with Hinamizawa syndrome. That would be correct. I think I might have figured out how to identify aliens. Anyway, something's nagging at me. This means... Hanya, what were we doing again? Oh, did you hit your head on tofu or something? We can't allow Takano to run wild, right? She's trying to spread N173 throughout the world. So our goal is to stop that, right? Yes, it is. But what about it? You're an idiot. A huge idiot. I can't believe it. It's two birds with one stone. I don't really understand. You. Obviously, Tamara talked to Takano. We just need to forget about Tamara and help this girl live freely on our planet. I mean, the humans possessed by Tamara's people can be taken over by Une, right? And the people Une's taken over can't be taken over by your people. The pair of stupid aliens both tilted their heads in confusion. It makes sense. Now all the pieces are in place. I know the entity of Takano is devil. This is all we have to do. So we just need to get Une into the people of Japan faster than Takano. Once we do that, no one will become infected, even if Takano spreads N173 everywhere. Well, I would feel kind of bad about clearing Takano's people out, so why don't we stick to just the prefecture so we can block Takano in? There's 47 different prefectures, so Takano Hime no Mikoto can spare at least one. Once we've surrounded Takano with Une, she won't be able to spread the infection any further. 
will seal off the spread in N173 and be able to prevent further damage. Now I get it. That development would prove fatal from Takano's perspective. Une has to be the true identity of the devil she spoke to Tomoitake about. That's the only thing that makes sense. Une and N173 are evenly matched. They can't beat each other. If we infect people with Une before they get N173, then we'll ruin all of Takano's plans. So there you have it. Oh, oh that's an incredible idea, Rika. Uh, I kind of understand, maybe? This is an incredibly good idea. Une will get to live on our planet, and we'll be able to prevent any more tragedy. Plus, we'll drive Tamara out of this prefecture, so it's two birds with one stone. If Une occupies the entire prefecture, then Tamara's people will be driven out of here. That would mean we'd never see Tamara Hino no Mikoto again, unless we left the prefecture, and we wouldn't have to listen to her complaints. For the first time in a thousand years, we would strike a blow against the god who claimed all of Japan for herself and nagged us any time we set even a foot upon her land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> boing, boing. Hanyu was dancing with joy. She must be thoroughly at odds with Tamara. Well, with such an arrogant attitude and condescending pestering, posturing, even Rika wanted to strike her after only meeting her once. What should I do? There's nothing we can do about Okonomiya. After all, this city is already infected with N173, so you can't infect the people here, right? That's right. In that case, what should we do? Well, hmm. According to Tomitake, all means of transport out of the city had been cut off to prevent the spread of infection. In other words, we couldn't get Uni out of N173's infected area. We would have to escape the city before Takano does and spread Uni's people. We should probably talk to Tomitake again and gain his support. Since Tomitake knows about the parasitic neurovirus, he should understand our situation too. Even if he does reject the idea of spreading Une, the information could lead to the discovery of a new treatment, or even a vaccine. Rika called Tomitake over and explained the situation. Of course, gaining his understanding took until dawn. But even so, he ultimately understood. Interesting. Alright, we'll have to leave the decision up to Tokyo. But her existence is... It's a huge deal. If Unichan's willing to cooperate, then we can prepare comfortable accommodations for her as well. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to being comfortable. <laughs> Tomitake is an understanding man. I'm sure he'll treat you well, Une. I'm happy. The end of this tragedy is finally in our sights. Well, we can't claim that until we get Uni out of the city. But it's at least one problem solved, I suppose. The Sonazaki Group office was the safest and most tightly guarded place in Okonomiya. They had food, resources, weapons, everything. They had Tomitake's understanding and cooperation. They had Uni's cooperation as well. In terms of chess, they were now a few moves away from checkmate. It was the perfect time for their opponent to give up. Unless the Joker Takano caused some kind of uproar. Plus, there's that obnoxious Tamara Heeman and whatever. She's not likely to welcome what we're trying to do now. That was when they heard the ringing of a tuning fork, and bright white light enveloped both Rika and Hanyu. She's here, Tamara Heeman no Mikoto. So I guess she's the god that talks to Takano, since she's immune to the infection. Speak of the devil. How dare you, leader of the Horn people. Truly, you've been plotting to taint our land with your filthy shoes. We will welcome our new friend Une. Yet that does not mean we will steal all of your land. Be quiet, tainted one. Know that we shall not permit your conspiracy to corrupt our land. Listen, there's this villain Takano, and she's plotting to spread what you call the Horn people to all of Japan. 
No, the entire world. If she does, then your people will be exterminated. Getting angry at us isn't going to prevent that from happening. If you're willing to cede a bit of land to Une, then Une's people can live on this planet, and you won't lose any more land. Anya won't have to see her face ever again either, and this can all be settled quietly between you three. Be quiet, child of man. Know that you are not permitted to use your tainted words. Ow. Stop using that headache power. She has always been stubborn and refuses to listen. Nothing you say will ever get through to her. You're the one who never listens. You tainted people. You horned people. My anger is not abated, even after a thousand years. I can say the same to you. I haven't lost any of my anger either for all of your harassment. I didn't know what kind of history those two shared. But if they held on to their grudges for a millennium, then the cause of their antagonism ran deep. Apparently, their history really isn't something humans, who only lived for around a century, could moderate. Well, that's just how gods are. Humans worship them all on their own, and yet the gods themselves are more human than humans. There are plenty of myths in every country about gods arguing and fighting with each other. I don't care about the fight between you two. Time or no whatever. If you don't want to listen, that's fine. But this is the only way to stop the tragedy happening in the human world. You wouldn't understand anything I said anyway, foolish priestess of the Horned People. Know that I have no intentions of exchanging words with a tainted priestess either. You're a god, okay, but you really tick me off. Maybe we shouldn't stop at one prefecture and just take Toyama and Gifu while we're at it too. I will not allow it. Know that I shall not allow you to corrupt the land of my people once more. There was the sound of glass shattering, followed by an angry bellowing roar. What happened? Considering the timing, it was obvious Tamara had done something. Yet Tamara human Nomikto was an inhuman being like Hanyu. She shouldn't be able to infer fear with the world of man directly. Takuno-san? Hello, Jiro-san. I had faith you and I would meet again. <laughs> Takuno had broken through the window and flew into the office. The whole spectacle was as flashy as a scene from a movie, and the men were all taken aback. Of course, even Tomitake couldn't avoid being dumbstruck. She was always unpredictable, but that was only in pers personality. She never had the physical ability to, to accomplish something like that. The men of the Somozaki group understood she was hostile from the aggressive smile on her face. Yet unlike with the rioters, they were unsure of how to respond. Meanwhile, Takuma was different. She understood exactly what she needed to be doing. Tomitake soon understood too. Her target was Une. If we spread Une's infection throughout Japan first, then N-173 will become useless. There won't be anything Takano can do then. But since she knew that from the start, she's targeting Une. Trying to uncover where she was hiding out in Okonomiya was inefficient. But once the Sonozaki group started sheltering people, Takano realized something. She just had to wait here, and Une would come to her. I only have business with that girl Une. Could you bring her out for me by chance? I don't know what you're t talking about. You don't need to play dumb. I've been watching you this whole time, after all. <laughs> I won't let you. We're going to contact Tokyo. Pardon me for interrupting. Welcome to the Sonozaki Group's office, Mio-san. My, my, quite the procession. Shion appeared with an array of tough men in tow. It went without explanation that Takano was an inv uninvited de guest. <laughs> You're a tough woman, but I think you've gone too far now. I think you're about to understand just how strong I am. <laughs> so she really was possessed by something. Takuma grabbed one head each in both her right and left arms, hands, and slammed, slamming them against opposite walls. Where did such monstrous strength come from in that slender frame? No, even someone huge couldn't have produced such strength. 
The physics of it were all wrong. Even if her slender frame did house monster strength, she couldn't have picked those big men up and thrown them so easily from that particular stance. Shion, Kasai, and the other men watched in shock, and all they could do was stare at Takano's otherworldly power. Shion-chan, if you don't pay attention, then your head will get splattered everywhere. <laughs> Shion's dumbstruck eyes met Takano's. And for once, she tr cringed with fear. I couldn't blame her. When a human witnesses something beyond their understanding, they're completely unable to act until they can explain it. Takuma's arms looked like huge bear paws to, to her. And before she could blink, those arms were swinging ferociously towards Shion. Look out! As Kasai shoved Shion out of the way, he grabbed Takano's swinging arm and used her own force to capture her arm behind her and shove her body onto the floor. My, my. What a frightening person. Where on earth did you obtain such strength? From God. Kasai, way to go. He got a good lock on her joints and pressed her into the ground. No matter how much strength she had, she shouldn't be able to struggle any longer. Takano wriggled in an effort to escape but she just looked like a pathetic bug pinned on its back. You should cease your futile resistance. Kasai's a scary man, so if you struggle too much, he might break your arm. I won't do it unless it's necessary. But I'm no gentleman, so forgive me if it comes to that. My, oh no, I really can't move. <laughs> With her joints locked so securely, it should hurt enough for her to face, for her face to twist in pain. Yet Takano remained collected and seemed amused at her inability to move. Is this the full extent of the power you're granting me? It's not, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yep, Tamahime. That's what I thought. <laughs> Takano used her other arm. And with just that single arm, lifted both herself and the and her grappler Kusai. It was like we were watching some kind of circus performance. No, Takuma's irregular, monstrous strength allowed her, with just one arm, to lift both herself and Kusai into the air. Even Kusai couldn't avoid being shocked. <laughs> In the next moment, he lost his hold on her, and she spun Kusai like a blender throwing him against the wall. You're having too much fun. She hung up behind Takuno and pale blue sparks could be seen. She had driven her trunk guard, her stun gun, into Takuno's body. No matter how strong you are, no body can withstand electric jolts. Yet Takuno just calmly turned around. My my, what is that? That's impossible. To think a mere child would do such a thing to the priestess of a god. What a bad girl. <laughs> Takuno's hand seized hold of Shion's face. Shion groaned and fought back, and we heard her gulp skull greeting, her resistance like a baby's against Takuno's vice-like strength. <laughs> this is your punishment, okay? The next moment, Shion's body was splayed out against the wall. For Shion, it was no different than her body being slammed into the ground. It felt just like she had been thrown out of the second story and slammed onto the hard concrete ground. Then her body slid down and crumpled onto the floor with a groan. Yet Takano was about to walk towards Shion again, looking for something else from her. Stop this now, Takano-san. I don't want to shoot you. Oh my, Jiro-san. <laughs> That's a very interesting idea. I'm very curious to find out if a human weapon can injure me now. <laughs> Takuma gay gazed at Tomitaka's submachine gun with amusement. It didn't seem to be the uniquely Japanese scorn of assuming it was just a model gun either. She was truly smiling, keenly curious as to what it would happen. What it would happen if she were shot by it. Tomitake failed to understand that too. Right now, Takunoto had to be gifted with some form of supernatural power. 
You mean Takano, your priestess, Tamahime no Mikoto. How could you be such a fool? Be quiet. Know that I shall not listen to you. I shall punish all peoples who dare to taint our sacred land. By letting our sacred land be tainted further with the horned people. <laughs> know that your hindrance is useless. Prepare yourself, Une. I haven't done anything. Insolence. Know that all your corruption lies bare before my eyes. It was never my intention to... She said the same thing when I arrived here and tormented me badly. She's just a bully. Tell me no whatever. I hold no grudge against you, but I personally dislike your priestess. So sorry, but if you're choosing right, then we're choosing left. Priestess of mine, the devil Une stands there. Now is the moment to slay her. So that's where you are, Une Chan. Takano looked at the wall. She could see Une's figure through it. Une also noticed she was being stared at and shuddered. Run! We can't stop her! <laughs> Once Takano checked her right fist, she slowly pressed it into the wall. She'll just walk through the wall like Jason. <laughs> then cracks began to spread through the wall, raying slowly out from her fist. Well, what's happening? Tomitaka-san said run, so run! Noi <laughs> chan hurry, this way! Run! <laughs> I think we gotta stop here. So the next stream will be... I think... Yeah, tonight at 8.30, so in about six and a half hours. After that, all we got left is... Probably one more stream of this, and we'll finish it. So I'm gonna crap save here before I forget our first save of this entire game. <laughs> and we're probably gonna finish this next week around at around this time, I assume. So rather than trying to rush to it all, I'll just stop here for the day, and we'll finish it next week. Hope you all have a good rest of your day. I'll see you later. Bye bye.